All right, thank you very much, Court. Uh, following the attempted Christmas Day terror attack, many questions about airline safety have resurfaced. Many doubt the terror suspect's seat selection was an accident. So does this mean that certain seats on a plane are really more vulnerable? Former Federal Air Marshal Robert McLean joins us live from Los Angeles. So, uh, Robert, does it look like this was a strategic move on the part of this uh, would-be bomber? Yeah, the reports are coming in. It looks like uh, this this seat was definitely selected. So it's a big problem that the airlines are given putting up these online maps to select where you want to sit. Should they when stop? You book your tickets. Should they stop that? Absolutely, immediately. He was uh, he was sat in 19A, right by the wing, right by the window. Yeah, that's uh, according to. Uh, what the what they're saying on this Airbus 330, that was a uh, that was a prime spot that was close to the fuel tanks right. and fuel systems. Hey, Robert, he walked uh, another on, another right. thing. He, go ahead. Th another thing the air airlines probably want to consider. There's new airplanes rolling out. They might want to put some type of a Kevlar uh, armor systems around these uh, around these fuel areas uh, for for these incidents. Interesting, Robert. When he walked on the plane, evidently he walked on late. He had his hand by his head. Would you know that as an air marshal that you got a guy with a one-way ticket, play, paid in cash, no, uh, I believe, I'm not sure if he had any luggage, only carry-on luggage, walking in like this, holding his head? Would that be something that you would have known of if you were an air marshal on that flight? Well, one thing I've advocated a lot is to have a have air marshal ground crews that pre-inspect the crowds before they get onto the flights. You try to get eye contact to passengers. This guy was was young, traveling alone. He didn't check any bags. There could have been flags there. This could have been a guy that you could have engaged with eye contact and see if he would have acted uh, differently than the general passengers. So uh, it, this is something that air marshals look for in uh, behavioral reactions. What's the future of air marshals, uh, Robert? Do we need more, or should they be doing different things? I think that it needs to be definitely reprioritized. There are so many inexpensive, relatively inexpensive physical security measures that the airlines, the FAA, and the TSA has not been implementing. And if you implemented those on short-range aircraft, smaller aircraft, right. and put those in, you could start deploying air marshals on these nonstop long-distance flights and more international flights. But you have too many FAMs, the air marshals, that are flying too many short routes on, and it's it's Waste you could put these physical securities in and get them on these uh, high priority flights. Real quick, Robert, you heard about what happened yesterday when this guy went into a uh, bathroom for over an hour, would not get out, said he was sick. Muslim man coming from Nigeria, same flight, same destination. What would you have done? Uh, it it depends on which uh, laboratory he's going into. If, uh, if it's a forward laboratory, I would probably be. Uh, I would probably go ahead and open it up and see what's going on and it, and move them back. But uh, yeah, uh, it definitely would have raised eyebrows and it probably would have been smart to uh, figure out what's going in. And they can't barricade themselves in there. The flight attendants have a uh, key to open those up to get them out. Where you kick it down. Robert McLean, thanks so much. Uh, former Air Marshal who knows the system and knows what needs to be improved. Robert, thanks. Thanks, Robert.